welcome to the Get Together. It's our show about ordinary people building extraordinary communities. I'm your host, Bailey Richardson. I'm a partner at People and Company and co-author of Get Together, How to Build a Community with Your People. And I'm Maggie Zhang, podcast correspondent. In each episode of this podcast, we interview everyday people who have built extraordinary communities about just how they did it. How did they get the first people to show up? How did they grow to hundreds more members? maybe even thousands in this case. Today, we're talking to Jonathan Carey. He's the Associate Places Editor, and I love this title, Community Headmaster at (laughs) Atlas Obscura, editing the submissions for places that people send in and jumping into forums to encourage conversation. Atlas Obscura is, if you don't know it, one of the only community-driven travel platforms. All the discoveries on the site are sourced by their users, their community. Their explorers, as they called them, have submitted over 20,000 places and cool food to try out on their database. We're talking about places like a church with Frederick Chopin's heart on display in Warsaw, or <laughs> and a spot where you can go see an abandoned Eurostar train covered in graffiti in France, or my personal favorite, the Ottoman bird palaces. Yes, ornate mansions for birds that are hiding in Istanbul. Anyone anywhere in the world can add to the site. Maggie, what's one thing you learned from our conversation with Jonathan? I learned so much, but I thought it was cool how, first of all, he kept calling the site AO and saying things like that's so AO. So he had a really strong sense of what this community stands for and the type of people who really care about Atlas. And it's cool because Atlas Obscura is designed around natural human instincts. So people want to talk about their travels. They want to share their discoveries and experiences, but oftentimes friends and family might get tired of hearing about your travels. But on Atlas Obscura, you're experiences are appreciated. People want to share in your discovery. And Jonathan also mentioned that the reason they're so successful as a community-driven travel platform is because they treat their contributors really well. They treat them almost like staff members where they give them a lot of feedback, loop them in when they want to hear more about a place. So they have people who might be experts in Estonia or in Azerbaijan, and they actually will ask their contributors to go out and look for more. And sometimes they even ask them to host events and actual trips. So there's all these different levels where you can get involved. And I especially like how Atlas Obscura is really respectful about each person's individual process. So they don't have a defined template about how you submit a place, but they do share guidelines about what they have found worked over the years in terms of a good piece. And then they work with each individual writer to accommodate what's best for them. So it's a really personalized process. Those are so many good insights, Maggie. Yeah, hearing you talk about how they tap into a natural instinct that people want to talk about their travels, but maybe don't want to do that (laughs) to annoy the heck out of their friends (laughs) and family. It reminds me of an interview we did a while ago with Instant Pots founder Robert Wang, who Mm. talked about how one of the key insights he built his business on is that cooking is a social practice. And he felt like there might be a chance that there could be a community and this could grow organically because it was a social practice. And you see people building small communities on Instant Pot around cooking beans or like keto Instant Pot cooking. Nice. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I love that way he phrased it of just like, I had an insight that this business is going to be in a space that's social by nature. And Mm. I feel like Atlas Obscura did that with travel as well, where many people hadn't embarked on it before. All right, let's get into it. Jonathan, I'm so excited to talk with you today because I'm a huge fan of Atlas Obscura. So thank you so much for joining. I've spent a year traveling this past year before COVID-19 hit and Atlas Obscura was my go-to resource for finding cool things. Literally anything from a miniature book museum to mud volcanoes. (laughs) And I feel like anybody I was with, they were always impressed by my discoveries, even though it was usually just from the website. So gave me a lot of good social cred. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to start out by asking, what made you a fan of Atlas Obscura? And what was your personal motivation to join the team and help build out the community? Yeah, I think like that whole curiosity and that wonder and finding cool things that really drew me to AO. I actually started reading Atlas six or seven years ago. I was a big fan of history, unique places, and just kind of that curious macabre world and the untold world. Macabre. 
Yes, love macabre. That word. Yes, Absolutely. Macabre. That it's, it's, brings Atlas Obscura to life for me. It's for sure. one of <laughs> our actual like main words we use at Amazon. Oh, I love it. Macabre. It's one of our catch Ooh. words. So those kind of weird curiosities and oddities just really drew me to Atlas and just the aspects of community and people really getting to explore and express themselves. That's one of the things that initially drew me to journalism anyway, was those things of being able to tell people stories and people getting excited mm-hmm. about telling stories. And that's pretty much the crux of what Atlas is. It's just chronicling the hidden places in the world. We call it the definitive guide to the world's hidden wonders. You can always go on Atlas and find something new. Yeah, that's awesome. And I love what you're saying about the focus on people because Atlas Obscura is one of the only community-driven travel platforms. It really feels very collaborative because all the discoveries are sourced by your users, by mm-hmm. your community. Yep. And I think I saw your explorers have submitted over 20,000 places yes. and cool foods to try out on the database. So why do you think this model has worked so well over the past decade? Well, it's it's always about that that fostering idea of community. Um, and like we talked about just a few minutes ago, like, it just want to tell people about it. So you take a trip and you're like, oh, my God. I remember when I went to St. Lucia and I got to ride horsebacks for the first time. I just wanted mm-hmm. to tell everybody about it. And it's that whole aspect of, like, wanting to share your experiences with people and that just provides that outlet. And I think that's what kind of helps drive our community, being able to be around like-minded people. We have so many people in our community that are experts in certain things or very focused on certain areas. You may really be into single object museums. You may be into museums of vacuum cleaners or microwaves or toaster ovens, but you've never (laughs) been able to share that kind of world with other people. Well, AO provides that avenue for you to share those things. And that's how we kind of like to see it as like an evolving thing. It's a tool. It's a a community-driven project, but it's also a a living thing that evolves over time and changes. And the more people add to it, the more we build those aspects. Um, is what makes it great and makes it special. So I think that's something that always draws people to it. It's that ability to be able to share and find like-minded individuals um, that actually share similar experiences and share similar interests. I uh, Mm -hmm. know that you studied journalism in college, and then you wrote after uh, graduating, before finding your way to Alice Obscura. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between like traditional journalistic approach to travel writing and what happens on Atlas Obscura. Like so many people have that traditional approach of one Mm -hmm. journalist being tasked with finding all the good places and like a three day trip somewhere. Mm -hmm. Why have other people not inverted this model and why has Atlas Obscura been successful in it? One of the things about Atlas is that is we always still try to strive for those journalistic principles. So with our place entries, we still stick to those principles that we really look for like good writing, and interesting places. One of our focal points is to make sure that like, we uphold those standards as well of publishing written work. One of the things that constantly um, makes this model so viable and so works is that I think also like our ability that we engage with our community. There's a lot of travel tools where like, one writer is tasked with going out and finding these places. It's kind of like a free-flowing thing, so you don't have to feel beholden to submit. Sometimes we have um, community members that come back from years that haven't you know, been active in the Atlas and they just went on a trip for the first time in a couple of years and they upload all the pictures and they get to writing and they share their experiences and then dive into it. And they're like right back in the fold again. I think that that aspect of it being something that's there and that you can participate in. But when you do participate, you see feedback, you see your work published. Um, we try to work kind of quickly to get turnarounds up so people can see their work and see things published and share their experiences. That's one of the aspects that kind of make Atlas works while we do stick to those journalistic principles and make sure that we are upholding those standards of a media company. We also want to make sure that we're engaging with our audience as much as possible, that we're allowing them to be as open as possible. So not all of the writing is the same. Not all places are structured the same. We kind of try to stick to a template. We have like certain parameters we like to meet, but it's, it could be that one place that you share that, nobody knew about or that may have been close to being you know forgotten about to time and to history and to nature that is now saved or that now is re-noticed and reintroduced to the world just because of one person's curiosity one of the things we like to say is that the difference about what you need to do when you build a community from Mm -hmm. traditional businesses or maybe traditional journalism in this case is you build a community with people not for them 
Exactly. And mm-hmm. you guys are saying, hey, world, tell us what you think is interesting, and then we'll give you some structure and support to package it up exactly. uh, instead mm-hmm. of just tell you what's interesting ourselves. I love that. One of the most important things is that we try to be open to, like, you know, if it's a plaque that's on the side of a church that's in the mountains of the Caucasus Mountains somewhere that nobody's ever seen before. We want that place. We want you to talk about that place. We're not going to say, oh, well, that's not popular enough. That's not. No, that the more obscure, the better. The more hidden, the better. The more wondrous, the better. And I think it's that aspect, that hunt for the next thing. It's, it's almost like you have a treasure map and you want to find like these little locations and get to these different points. And there's people that hunt for things their entire life. It's just like that. It's like, okay, well, wonder what's the next place I can find. It's a great Pandora's box to open of learning about things that we didn't know existed in the world and being able to like bring them back and talk about it. And like I said, building with people, like you tell us what's important in this world. You tell us what's special. You tell us what's unique and what's different. And we'll work with you to make sure that that's something that's able to be shared with everybody else in the world. You have a sweet job. I bet you're learning about stuff all the time. <laughs> it's so awesome. Yes. I, <laughs> one of the best things about Atlas is in one of our Slack channel, we have like a, a running thread of things I learned today. And we just constantly post things in there. We have like a great community and a very, very smart community that is constantly like helping us learn. We're constantly getting notes, whether it's in forums or it's edits to places or it's it's notes here or it's an email here. Hey, did you guys know X, Y, and Z about this place? And I think that's what makes working at Atlas and like makes working on the community side of things so rewarding is that I learn so much from my community and then I can like help put those things into fruition and like share the things that I learned from my community with everybody else at Atlas and then use those things that I take from them and their interests and their desires to help build the community even better. How can we make it even smarter? How can we make things even more cool, unique, wondrous? How can we showcase things better? So, I mean, it's like a constant learning process. And I think for anybody that's like, you know, history buff like myself, or if you're a naturalist, you love nature and you know, environmentalists, like it's, it's all there for you to like constantly learn and understand. So it's, it's yes, it's a wonderful place to work on myself. <laughs> Professionally yes, curious. Absolutely. And I'm sure you must be the best travel partner. Yes, very much so. I try to be at least. I like what you said about, yeah, you want to keep things free flowing because the goal ultimately is to just get people mm-hmm. to share. And you recognize that community members have a wide range of interests from plants to history. So you don't want to mm-hmm, restrict mm-hmm. them too much. But I'm wondering what sort of guardrails do you put in place to help people submit quote unquote good mm-hmm, entries? Mm-hmm. Like, how do you make it easier for your editing team or the people reviewing the submissions to get it into a good story that can be shared? Yeah, so we're very much open to any of these places around the world. We do have a submission guidelines as far as like how to submit to the Atlas and what makes a really good place entry and what makes it better, like um, a chance of it being submitted to the Atlas. Um, so we look for a couple of key things, like photos, of course, is always important. Making sure that it's someplace that's wondrous, um, curious, hidden locations, um, abandoned, um, things that deal with nature, outside of art, cemeteries, the macabre, Anything with hidden history, collections, museums, um, curiosity shops is one of my favorite places and oddity shops around the world. Mm. Ruins, any of those things make a great place entry. So while we may not necessarily take the Eiffel Tower, we may take a diorama of the Eiffel Tower and of Europe that's in a museum somewhere in the northeastern part of the United States somewhere. Like, we'll love that place. So that helps. It makes it a little bit easier for our editors. And then we kind of look for those, like, kind of particular things. So make sure that we're kind of, like, detailing a little bit about that history and also providing information for our travelers. What is about this place that would make people want to know? What is it they need to know about this place? How do they get there to make sure that the coordinates are correct? And those type of aspects are, like, just the little layers of things that we kind of, our little kind of buffer zones to make sure that we, you know, make things easier for our editors and to make sure that we're actually getting really good places. Our community does like a really good job. You can tour the Atlas and say, okay, I see, uh, you know, these particular type of museums. I, I know the Atlas. And we always tell people before they submit to like, you know, run through the Atlas, just give it a look to make sure that a certain place hasn't been submitted already. And that also that you can kind of get a feel for things, that you kind of get a feel for how the Atlas operates, type of places that we're looking for, and then build from there. It's not a, a labor intensive process. And even when we're sending feedback to people, we always try to tell them also in our feedback that, hey, we, we like this place, but you may want to focus on this particular mural 
inside this museum of things instead of, you know, this particular chain of museums. Sometimes we get a lot of people submitting whole areas or regions, so we try to help whittle it down. Okay, let's focus on this particular area in this particular region. So I think that aspect, too, also helps the kind of the process and also helps people constantly come back because they get that feedback and they understand, okay, this is the route I can take now, and then they kind of come back with things. It's nice what you're saying about giving them feedback because it feels like you're treating each community member like a staff writer. You're treating them with respect, uh, looping them into the process, and that's, yeah, really special. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it is that we try to treat them as staff writers. We, We want the process to be as smooth as possible, and we also want it to be as involved as possible. Even though we're getting a lot of submissions a day, we try to be as, you know, courteous to our users and courteous to people as possible for their work and the time and the effort they're putting in. So we, you know, let them know that it may take a while or that we're working on things and we're trying to keep them in the loop and keep them updated. Um, if something needs work, we'll let them know what possibly needs work to it. And we'll let them know and we'll send them feedback on it. But we try to be as engaged as much as with our community. And I think that's what makes it even more rewarding, I would hope. Um, for our community members that it's not just submitted and then it kind of just falls into a black hole somewhere and you're like, okay, was it good enough or was it not good enough? <laughs> or, you know, is it going to, when is it going to go up? Or haven't heard anything back. I've emailed three times. Like, no, right, you, you yeah. email us. We're going to get back to you. We're going to figure out what's going on. Um, we're going to try to work with you to the best of our abilities. And as much as we like to try to accept every place and as we're not going to be able to, but we mm-hmm. really lean all the way in more towards our community and what they want and how can we make even the entry better and just so they can feel that aspect that they're working with somebody and not working for somebody. That's awesome. And you mentioned that some users actually will cover entire regions or have mm-hmm. some sort of specialty. Mm-hmm. So how do you highlight or celebrate them? For example, do they get little badges or do they get special titles or yeah, how are they uplifted? One of our main things that we like to do with like a lot of our users, we keep a monitor on on certain community members that are like like contribute a lot to the atlas and that really work hard on the atlas and that um are very very enthused by the atlas. So we we've done in the past we've done Q and A's um with some of our community members about what they like, what they're into, um why they're into into this particular region or this particular aspect of history. We've also done different things in the past as far as some of our community members actually. And even subjects of stories, or sources that we use for stories, um, becoming to be on working with the experience team, um, and our travel team, to either be guides or leading experiences or hosting events that the Atlas travel team puts on. We kind of follow those people and we keep an eye on them and saying, hey, we noticed that you submitted, you know, X, Y, Z amount of places in this amount of time. We're super appreciative. We want to help you highlight these even better. We, we would love some more places from this area if you're willing to. So we try to like involve them even more, trying to orchestrate different ways that we can better highlight our community members, whether that is um, showcasing more people that submit so many places and maybe giving um, more treatment to those to those particular people as far as like exposés, more Q&As. We also have lists on our site that we use a lot of with our place entries. Can we gather this particular users, their amount of places that they've done and then highlight them in a list format and then share them with the world? We have a leaderboards at the moment. So those leaderboards constantly change. So when you submit so many to this amount or this region, then you move up the leaderboard. So it's a constant ranking system on the website. Mm -hmm. Um, So you can always see that you're number one in, say, Northern Africa, or you're number one in Southern Italy, or you're number one in places in Prague. It kind of helps community members to monitor their process. I bet they love that. Yeah, we've had some some series, uh, some inquiries about when is the leaderboard going to be updated? So, (laughs) yes, we love it because it... It's people's enthusiasm. You should want us to update the leaderboards immediately because you put in the work to update your entry, to add more. You should ask us for that. We should update it immediately. Exactly. So we want to make sure that the Atlas, like I said, it's a community project. And without our community, it, it wouldn't exist. And these cool places wouldn't be, you know, documented. It's archive of the world. So even we do keep closed places in the Atlas, and we keep them in there for that particular purpose of preserving that history and preserving that person and that community member's writing. Um, we don't want to like erase their their hard work off the site or it's closed and we delete it. No, it's still this place existed at one point in time in history, and this is our testament to that history, and this is that person's ode to that history. So we like to keep that on the site. We're preserving history along the lines as we go along as well. So, but but the leaderboards, yes, the leaderboards can be a uh, 
a, a, a fun thing to watch change over time. So giving people ultimate bragging rights at parties. Yes, it it does it does it does elicit a lot of bragging rights. I will say so myself. So you mentioned earlier that some users who submit entries, like you might reach out to them to host trips or experiences. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Can you share a little bit more about that? So we have an entire travel and experience team. They host different events. So they're always kind of on the lookout for people that are kind of talking about interesting things to show interesting thoughts on certain places or certain topics. Sometimes we do come across somebody in the forums that's kind of talking about something or have a particular interest. And I'm like, hmm, you know, let's pass them off to the experience team and maybe they can host an experience. So maybe that's something they would be into or maybe they can interview them and kind of work them into the process. So it's still a process, but it's something that we've always been kind of, that we've been even more cognizant of now, especially with um, launching online experiences that, and in this time is that we, you know, would love to have so many different people that can share different things and are experts at different things. So we always are on the lookout for those people and for subjects that are in stories as well. They could be great hosts in the future. It's serendipitous, so to speak, that we kind of just spot somebody or we may just say, you know, hey, you know, I may ping one of our team members over an experience and say, hey, you know, this person has been talking a lot about this and they might make a good host one day, a good experience leader. And it's still a process after that, but it gets them into the door and it's something, and it's a way for us to even push that aspect of community even further and take their knowledge and their experiences even further than Atlas. Mm, yeah, like always looking for ways to ramp people up. Exactly, exactly. Yep, ex- absolutely. That's the best way to put it. Like if we're finding that like, okay, this person is so AO and they're so Atlas, like, we probably should like let the experience team know that this may be, we may have found the gym here that somebody could be a great host. I like that phrase, that's so AO. Yes. <laughs> I'm into that. Are there any things mm-hmm. you can share about how how you pinpoint if someone is like, that's AO that you're willing to share? I just for context, I used to run the suggested user list on Instagram. So like the people that got feed and we had to like come up with things that we were looking for. Like they replied to their comments. They were friendly. They posted publicly regularly. Yeah. But is there any like insights you can share about someone that's so AO? Like what, what do you look for? Somebody that's so AO. If I get a chance to talk about um, Edo Japan or Japanese houses, uh, oh, the medieval times or 14th, 15th, 16th century, I would just ramble on about it and just go on and go on and go on and just talk about how cool and interesting it is. That's so <laughs> AO because you're like, you find something that's like, that's your thing and it's so interesting to you that you have to almost shout it out to tell people about it. And it's like so cool to you. And it doesn't matter whether or not other people find it interesting or you're going to find somebody that finds it interesting, but it's still willing and want to share that just, oh my God, I found out this about this place. And it's just so cool. And it's like just that, that feeling that you get inside and you can kind of, you spot those out even in the forums and even on some of our place entries. Sometimes we'll have entries that are only, you know, maybe one or two paragraphs long. And then we'll have some place entries that are five paragraphs long. You spot it. Okay, mm. that's so AO. That's that's exactly what that person is super interested in this. You can tell by the way they're writing. You can tell by how deep they dove. You can tell by the research and the time they put in. But this is really something that they're interested in. So I think that that feeling you get when you're talking about something that you're super into that maybe the whole world is into. Maybe there's not a large group of people that are really into it, but you're so into it. I think that like perfectly outlines That excitement you get from discovery, that excitement you get from learning something new, that excitement you get from telling somebody the things that you learn and that you like almost can't contain yourself that you're telling somebody something. I remember I had a teacher in um, back in undergrad and we had an actual class on the history of piracy and like the golden age of piracy. And like the way she would talk about the age of piracy was just like, it always just stood out to me and just like, wow, like she's like, this is so exciting. (laughs) This like gets her juices going in the water and like talk about this age of piracy and like the misnomers about it and the the women pirates that nobody ever mentions and the Barbary Coast pirates that nobody ever talks about. And it just that feel of excitement, mm. that's just so AO as far as like, <laughs> with, like I can't stop saying that's that. Right. Like, it's, 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 that's exactly what I think would embody is like somebody that, that ventures to our site that um that adds to the atlas, that reads the stories, that engages yeah. with all of our content is that they really get that thrill about telling people what they learn is also the thrill they get Mm. by learning and just learning new and cool things and learning about new aspects of the world that they didn't even know existed. And then going out and just like blurting that out to the masses or wanting to share it. That's like 
quintessential what AO is and what AO, uh, what our community members are. And all of us at AO, we're pretty much all <laughs> just like our community members. So. I want to see that on a t-shirt. That's so AO. I, mean, I may actually have to tell somebody about here. that now. I may have to like ping my founder and say, hey, I have a great idea now. <laughs> <laughs> Inception. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it is interesting because I, I keep thinking about how people like to say, like, nobody wants to hear your travel stories. When you come back from a trip, your friends and family are always just so exhausted hearing yeah. you mm-hmm. out about, like, a cool museum or a cool curiosity shop you went to. But at least on AO, you find people who actually just would love you to keep talking and keep elaborating. So it kind of solves that, like, loneliness in your immediate circles of not being able to share the things you're really excited mm-hmm. about. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's really cool. I think that's like kind of is the epitome of it in a nutshell is that, you know, it's that that aspect of when you return from a trip and you want to tell everybody about, you know, the cool thing that you saw, the cool thing that you did. Like AO is the place to go. It is it's chronicling their journeys. It's chronicling the things that they saw. Um, although it may not be necessarily a first person account, it's it's their journal, it's, it's their images, it's their photos, it's their words. So that's how I always looked at it. It's like a, like a travel log, a travel journal, a travel diary for people. Um to be able to come back from their wonderful experiences and these curious places in the world and scream from the mountaintops of look how cool (laughs) this place I found is and listen to what I have to tell about it without anybody saying, oh, be quiet. Like, no, we want you to talk louder here and we want to hear you. So Nice, nice. Yeah, and because you mentioned the site is like an archive, their entries will never be deleted. So just always there, always for them. Yep, yep, absolutely. Just from this conversation, it sounds like your community is very curious, adventurous, loves discovering things off the beaten path. I imagine that also means that people are pretty restless and probably out in the world constantly exploring. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting, like at the same time, you probably want people to be offline exploring places, finding all the hidden treasures, but then they come back online afterward to submit and write about them. So Mm -hmm. do you see some sort of, I guess, cyclical nature of your community? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like even your most popular users or the most engaged tend to go quiet for periods of time and then they come back really engaged? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, we experience that quite often. Um, but not too, too often. So we do, we do, it is a very cyclical nature to the website, um, and to the Atlas where we do have certain users that the community members that will venture out for a while and we won't hear from them. We're like, Oh my God, so-and-so, so it's gone dark. But we kind of know at this point now, like over time, you kind of learn, you learn your community. You're always going to know your community members. So you're going to know, okay, so-and-so and so hasn't, we haven't, they usually submit twice a week where they're at, what's happening. Well, they might be on a trip. And then usually we, so we do see sometimes a, a particular community member will go dark for a little while and then they'll give us, they'll come back maybe two or three weeks later and we'll see like five entries from them. We're like, okay, they were on a trip. Okay, so now we understand. So yes, we do kind of see that. One of the ways that we kind of handle that is that we, we try to make sure that even with our publishing cycle, we try to make sure that we kind of space things out so that so many things don't appear in one location at the same time. So we try to space them out and we try to also let our community members know like, hey, we're probably going to space some of these out a bit so we just don't have a, a cluster of places and they're always super open. Over time, we learn from our community members like their habits and their ways and their kind of methods of publishing and their methods of writing. Like you really learn a lot about, it's just like like we said before about like having a group of staff writers and a team of staff writers. Mm-hmm. Like you learn their voice, you learn how they work, how they write. Um, so we kind of, we learn how our community members submit, what places they're going to submit, um, what locations they are, the, um, where they're at in the world at the time um so and that's also pretty cool too because we kind of see like where they're going in the world and see like what they're doing um and then we also have um we also have community members that you know that don't travel as much but are just very curious explorers and they dive into places on the internet and they dive into different locations Mm -hmm. and they read they study and they read books and they and they educate themselves on these places and these locations around the world and they share them with us and we were taken back by them. We're like, oh my God, we didn't know about this place. And then we can kind of share them too. So we see a lot of different um, habits from our community members, but over time we learn those habits and we learn how to work with them as well um, to help them. Cause we don't, like I said before, we, we're, we're more accepting than we want to be. Okay. Well, we can't take this now. We can't do this now. No, we, you gave us a bunch of places at one time. We're just going to let you know it's probably going to take some time, but we really appreciate the work that you put in. And we really appreciate yeah. that that while you were on this vacation and that you were out exploring and could have been doing a million other things, you were actually thinking about AO and thinking about the place you were going to submit. And we 
cherish that aspect of our travelers and our community members is that when they're out in the world that they're thinking about Atlas and they're thinking about mm. improving the Atlas. And I think that's really special about Atlas was here. Do you have any favorite community stories? I remember when we were talking before we started recording the podcast, you mentioned one member, he submitted so many entries mm -hmm. um, on Atlas Obscura that he ended up writing a book about obscure discoveries in Mexico. Yes. <laughs> do you have any favorite stories like that? Or do you want to share more about that story? That was one of them. And that was just kind of like we found serendipitous. He's one of like our like one of our main community members. Like he's been around for a while and submitted a number of places. And um, one of my former colleagues just like looked him up one day and said, oh my God, he has a book out. And I'm like, really? And then we kind of like looked at it and we was like, oh my goodness. So this is kind of like what his journey's been. He's been kind of chronicling these things and submitting to the Atlas while also chronicling them in his book. And that's just like super cool. So awesome. Yeah. And then also I think one of the cool things that happened recently is we just got an email, like a random email from a, a seventh grader who said, you know, hey, AO, I love your site. I'm stuck at home. I like to draw. I'm an illustrator. I would like to draw some more for your website. And we Ooh. looked at the pictures and they were incredible. She's in the seventh grade and she's drawing like detailed artwork. And it was incredible. And we were like, I wonder if there's something else to this. And it just spawned a whole kind of avenue for us that we did for a couple months, right around the time that the pandemic hit and we we're kind of trying to figure out what are some good ways that we kind of address our community that kind of stuck in the house, they can't get out and explore as much as they want to. How can we create some fun and we create this whole wonder from home um, kind of initiative that we were doing. And one of our things that we did on our side of it was that we kind of started these writing prompts and these art prompts. So we would, uh, we would write a, a certain details of places in the atlas without showing any pictures of them and then just submit them out to the world and say and tell our community members can you draw this place and replicate it for us and then we took the best ones and then we published them we've done some writing prompts as well um that actually like got our community members involved so i think like that one email just kind of like spawned and we used like her drawing it's like the lead image for um when we published that particular project of the art prompts um, so it was really cool, but it's just like that aspect of like, you know, engaging with people and like taking somebody, just sending you an email and just saying, hmm, I wonder if there's more to this that we can do because this person took the time out to do this. And I think we might can explore, like, let's see what our community like is really into. Mm -hmm. I think we're actually still getting emails, but it was so cool that that idea actually came from somebody in our community because it was something that yeah. wasn't on our radar at all. And it actually turned into like a really big initiative for us here at Atlas. And it goes back to what you're saying about making people feel special. Like that exactly. seventh grader must feel like such a star. Exactly. Well, she was a star. <laughs> One of our big goals is always with our community is that how can we constantly make them feel like they're a part of the team? We don't want anybody yeah. to feel like this is a site that they just visit and they explore and they peruse. We want to make them feel like this is their thing, that this is my thing. And that's why people can submit edits to certain places. So if they see something wrong, if there's some updates that need to be made, if there's a grammatical error, because we want them to feel like this is their project. If they want to rewrite mm -hmm. everything and change it around, we may have to relook at it and redo some things to it, but it's all perfectly fine. It's all perfectly welcome because this is just as much as it's our thing. It's everybody's thing. It's our community thing. Yeah. The time that they put in it and they work on it is what we want to reflect back on our end as well. And we want to make sure that we you know, show them, give them the tools and the ability to know that, hey, this is yours as well. It's not just ours. It's not just you know, Atlas Obscure, this thing, this cool thing. You know, this is your thing too. This is your cool thing. This is your cool place. We want you to make sure like that everybody knows that the clubhouse is always open and we want you to be a part of building the clubhouse. So. Okay, because we're talking about feel-good stories, mm -hmm. <laughs> I just want to bring up another feel-good story. Absolutely. So I, I read um, on the Atlas Obscura website, a really cool success story from the community is about the root bridges mm -hmm. of Cherpunji. I read that they were natural bridges grown from tree roots, but people wanted to start replacing them with more modern built bridges mm -hmm. because the atlas obscura community brought them into the spotlight now there's actually scientists caring for and studying the bridges mm -hmm. can you tell me more about that story yeah that was i think that place entry that entry was from a while ago i want to say the early 2000s i think when that kind of story kind of took off i believe i could be wrong um but i want to say probably around like 2009 2008 
it was a place entry that got highlighted um and we kind of followed up a little more about it and it actually the the entry itself was very very detailed entry so it kind of included like a lot of information about the bridge and just the history of it and just the naturalization of it and that it's literally a wonder um and that kind of just got us to kind of exploring it more on the website and i think we had a story i think that ran in slate a while ago um of, or around that time that also dealt, dealt with it as well and that kind of explain a little more about the science that got involved. But we have a lot of those instances in the Atlas where we have a particular place that is not necessarily always saved, but that is brought back to life or that is saved. But we have also, like, I think one of like the greatest places that, well, some of the places I love the most are um, the little oddity shops and the obscure places because they don't receive as much attention in the world. And it just adds, it just helps these little places, these little enclaves um, in society, in the world that, you know, may not be around for much longer, get some publicity and allow people to explore and bring some attention to these particular locations, um, especially those that involve the natural world. It's super important because I think anything that involves the natural world that we put in the Atlas has a great potential to continue to draw attention to itself, continue mm -hmm. to get people to thinking about it. You never know when you'll have another audio shop that's about to close. It's those things like that that we try to like always keep in mind. We've talked about um, like the Atlas entries where people submit cool places and foods. We talked a bit about experiences that sometimes you ask your community to help host. And then I want to talk about the forums too. I know they're relatively new, right? Like yes. started a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like forums is a very obvious evolution of bringing the community together. So mm -hmm. how do you help encourage conversation on the forums? What are your favorite topics? Mm -hmm. And I also wonder, do you also use some of the ideas from the community for articles too? Because it's such a good crowdsourcing resource. Yeah, so the forums, they're still relatively young. Um, compared to most places that, you know, have like a community forums and they're like a thousand or one threads. But one of the things that um that we do to kind of like engage conversations is that place entries are uploaded into the forums and they're open for discussion. Um, and then we also post stories as well into the forums for like kind of an open comment discussion page and kind of open discussion. We also would do what we call show and tells. That was one of our biggest things that we added to the forums. Um, and one of our biggest kind of community drivers around the forums. And basically what Show and Tell was was that we just kind of pick any kind of random atlas -y topic and that we have kind of um, a robust amount of objects in the atlas or places in the atlas um, to kind of convey. So, for example, we did um, show us show us your most peculiar elevator. Show us the world's most strange, the strangest elevators in the world. Uh, show us the bathrooms that you have to pee in before you die. I would love to read that. I'm so excited about that. It's, <laughs> Google's now. It's, it, it was actually like so great, like the ones that we did. So we have those, show us your most incredible ruins, and we just allow people to kind of just free flow and engage. We've also done a book club before. Then we also use the forums as basically like a direct feed, a direct source to us in, on, on the places team. Um, so that people can, if you have an issue with the places or there's something that you don't quite understand that's going on or you want feedback on something on the website that may not work right or some tool that's not acting right or on your device, um, it's a direct line to us to get to us and to reach us. Um, so it's also a great way to like let for our community to be able to like, you know, address any grievances or customer service issues or anything of that nature. Nice. Yeah. Like giving people a direct line to each other, but also a direct line to your team too. Yeah. In case any and, and also one of, the, and one of the cool things about the forums, especially with the, the system up those different place entries is that we have people that actually, you know, chronicle their journeys to these places in the forums. We have one community member that has, has been using it as like his travel law and kind of like his chronicle through these different places. And he put, and uses it literally as a diary. he put a date and time that he visited and then kind of describe the place and what he saw and is it easily accessible and kind of like a little bit of information about it. It's a personal collection, but whereas a public collection where people can read it as well. And kind of, you can literally follow his journeys um, probably from 2010, 2018 to now. And it's really cool um, because he's, you know, he's open to sharing and he's sharing his experiences with the world and the community. Uh, keeping with the overall theme of the Atlas as a travel utility and a travel tool that people can use the forms to come through to, to receive answers, to ask questions, um, to, hey, how do you 
you know, I, I made this particular dessert that I saw on Atlas. Did I miss this or did I miss this? Or has anybody ever tried this? Um, so it's also a place for people to come um, and obscurians and people that, that share the vision of AO and, and love AO to come and, and to also ask questions and see if they can, mm-hmm. you know, potentially come across one of those experts or somebody that really knows something about this particular place or that may know about this particular ingredient or where to find this particular set of ruins or how to navigate. We've had different threads about traveling with children. One of our most popular threads was um, in the earlier days was tell us about the perfect stranger that you met while traveling. And it actually kind of, it went like, really deeper than we thought it was of people sharing these wonderful stories of people they've run into or on travels or times they may have been stranded in on, on a travel situation or on a group travel and they just with just one other person and how they grew a bond it's just i think people being able to like tell their stories is still like an essence of human nature that will never go away and that's yeah. like something that we try to keep fostering in the forms and on alice the more open and environment is for them to share those stories and they feel comfortable um, the more you're going to get of those people sharing those stories. We want these uh, people's thoughts to be heard, and we want people's yeah. feelings to be out there in the world and, you know, the things that really interest them. Mm, love that. I just want to wrap up by asking what's on your mind these days. The travel industry, it has changed very yes. drastically yes, has. Um, given COVID-19. So wondering, um, are there any challenges on your mind that our listeners can help with? Yeah, one of our biggest challenges going forward is definitely how do we navigate um, the world of travel during these different times and um, what the world may look like after we get through these difficult times. I mean, also being responsible um, with our community as far as places that they're going and making sure they're being safe and making sure that we're conveying these messages of being safe and and diligent and being aware of your surroundings and, and, and aware of the times. We've done show and tells we did one where we were asking people to, you know, show us what's outside your window. Show us something that's in your house that you've just discovered since you've been during the pandemic. Show us a curious object that you've rediscovered in your house. And we also did, um, we did a study guide for children that were like at home right when school was still going on and schools got canceled. Um, we were doing like a list of like these wonderful AO places. Um, we did like, you know, AO's guide to the golden age of piracy. So those were some things that we were trying to do. So just navigating Um, these various aspects of travel exploration during the pandemic and how can we best serve our community and how can we continue these aspects of exploration even in different circumstances and difficult times. Yeah, love it. Keeping people's sense of wonder going even as they're stuck at home. Yeah, so it's 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 a challenge, but we're doing unique things, different things that you can I guess it's like kind of open a door for us to look at our online platforms and look at different things that we do with our online community and And how can we use Zoom? How can we use different tools like this to better engage our community and do different things with our community? And it's actually made us more diligent and more aware of our community and being more thoughtful of our community as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. This was an awesome interview. Glad we got to um, geek out about travel and (laughs) all the awesome things AO has been doing. So yeah, thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. It's been awesome, guys. I loved it. Thank you, Jonathan. If you want to learn more about Atlas Obscura, head to their website, atlasobscura.com. You can check out their atlas of places and foods to help you plan your travels or just get inspired. You can look at their forums where they have so many cool topics and questions about favorite books you read, most random street signs you've seen, the most beautiful roads you've driven on. So check it out. And there's so many ways to get involved with their community. Yeah, or you can just be a lurker like me and use it everywhere you go. (laughs) To find out more about the work that Kevin, Kai, my business partners, and I do as people and company, helping organizations get clearer on who their most important community members are and how to build something meaningful with those people, head on over to our website, peopleand.company. Also, if you want to start your own community or supercharge one you're already a part of, maybe you're part of AO, our handbook is here for you. Visit gettogetherbook.com to grab a copy. It's full of stories and learnings from conversations with community leaders like this one with Jonathan. And final thing, if you don't mind, click subscribe or review us. It helps get stories like Jonathan's out to more people. Awesome. Talk to you next time.